Lucia Moretti. I always knew marriage for me would never be to a man of my choosing. As a young girl, I was all too aware of the power I wielded in a world where men were supposed to be the superior gender. To the underworld, I was just a mafia princess. To my family, I was an equal. To my soon-to-be husband, well, that was yet to be determined. But I pray Enzo Bianchi was ready for me because I was damn sure prepared for him. Enzo Bianchi. The life I had seen for myself was no longer an option. My entire world had been turned upside down by the very people who were supposed to be family. Us Bianchi men were starting anew, forging alliances with criminal organizations who understood our plight. The plan had been simple, cut and dry. That was until Lucia Moretti showed up with a plan of her own, one I couldn't say no to. Now everything was at stake, including my heart. Note, Sinful Vow is one book of the Mafia Misfits, but can be read as a stand alone. Trigger warning. This story includes depictions of violence and talk of sex trafficking off page, and it may be sensitive for some viewers and listeners. So please, if this is a sensitive topic for you, I'll see you next week. Peace and blessings. Sometimes the bad can be good too. Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Erica the Bibliophile, and today our book is Sinful Vow by Asia Monique. This was a really good read. Um, I think I did a trigger warning in the beginning, but I'm going to do it again. This is a like dark romance with mafia talk violence and mentioning of sex trafficking but there's like no description in the actual book so let's get started we have a meeting of uh, five families going on in the beginning and the purpose of the meeting is actually for one who was it Moretti? No, Arbiach. But um, no, it was Angelo Biachi Bianchi. I don't know how to say it. Uh, but he's offering marriage to Moretti from his son for his daughter, and so they agree because you know that's something that goes on in the mafia to strengthen. Strengthen the families, you know, bring them together, business opportunities, whatever. Um, so they agree. And then we are introduced to Lucia, who is a assassin, and she's actually on a job. And as soon as she completes the job and breaks down, she's like in her car driving to like her next location. She gets, well, she puts in a call to let them know that the job is complete. And they let her know, you know, you're needed at this location. That location is her parents' house. So she know that comes from her dad. So she gets there. And when she gets there, her dad looks to be in a meeting because it's her dad. She has a twin brother and um, three other men who happen to be Angelo and his two sons. So she's like, you know, what am I doing here? And her dad basically she has to play the meek role even though she's anything but because you know in the mafia world the men are the superior gender and women are to be seen not heard so you know the only thing her dad says is that you're needed so she knows exactly what that means that means that it's time for her to be married off to somebody and she always knew this day would come you know they always told her about it so that's not a surprise to her so she looks at the two sons and is like which one but neither one of them speak but she's drawn to enzo so they have a conversation and then enzo asks everybody to leave the room you know so they can have a conversation with each other um 
because she asked her dad, you know, like, did you tell him? And the dad was like, you know, this is a conversation that I was looking to have at a later time. But since my disrespectful daughter wants to have it right now, I guess you can tell him right now. So Enzo was like, you know, tell me what? And that's when everybody but them, like, clears the room. And she takes off her watch to show him, like, a, a design, like a tattoo around her wrist to prove that she's a part of a secret society of assassins. And if you're in the mafia or if you're a made man, you know exactly what that means. So he asks her, you know, like, do you plan on quitting? And she's like, no, don't ask me to do that because... I'm not going to like she has the option to like when you get married you can I guess step down but she's like I'm not doing that don't ask me to do that so he's like okay it is what it is so we go to oh and he tells her now that she'll have guards following her and she's like if you put guards on me I will kill them like i i can feel when somebody's following me they're not going to be discreet enough that i'm not going to know who they are and so he's like whatever you know like you're going to be my fiance i'm going to make sure that you're protected um, and then she has this uh what do i want to call it like a side job a secret thing that she's doing where nobody knows anything about it but it's her her cousin and two other women um who was it victoria and jasmine they're all a part of a project that they keep like on the low and with her two guards that she has not following her you know that basically throws off the operation so one day her and her cousin like they leave out the house and it's like you know what are we gonna do we can't do what we need to do knowing that they following us and Lucia's like, man, leave it all to me. So they go up talking to him, like, you know, do you ever, which was so fun. Like, for, okay. I'm sorry, but it did come to my mind because she was like, you know, if they're always on guard and supposed to be watching people, when do they have time to sleep or eat? And so that's when Lucia was like, let's go ask them. So they go up to the car, knock up on the door, engage them in conversation. And then at first they weren't saying, like the guards, they weren't saying anything. Then they started answering her questions. And she's like, you know what? Take me to him. And they do. And so they pull up to his casino. And he's like, you know, what? Basically, like, what are you doing here? And she really couldn't answer, but she just knew. Well, she had to play it off as well. Because while, excuse me, they're there she tells her cousin you know text them tell them to move now and we'll figure out the rest later but she also just wanted to see him but she couldn't you know come right out and say that and so they're just doing this back and forth flirting if you if you could call it flirting they're flirting with each other and so let's fast forward to two months is it two months no it's like a week sorry i'm i'm getting information my notes mixed up um i believe it's the wedding so then there's the wedding where once again it's something about the mob and the mafia and i guess i i love any anyway, her dress was red and where i'm going with that is if you heard my review for be loves cameron's story her wedding dress was also red. I'm like, I love this. Like the non-traditional wedding dress of red or black. I mean, you can have whatever color you want, but those two colors, like as a wedding dress and the dress sounded beautiful. I was like, I need to see this in like movie form or depiction of some kind. Cause I know it would just be so dope. But then also I'll probably be disappointed cause I feel like what I'm conjuring in my mind from how she described it. I don't think anybody could do it justice. But anywho. We're not here for that. So at the wedding. Oh okay. Sorry let me double back real quick. To when they was at the hotel. So while they flirting. And stuff and talking. In his. Is it his room? Like his place? Anyway the door opens. Okay sorry. Uh, And it's Enzo's uncle. And she could tell by the way he tensed up 
that he don't like this man. So she looking at him like, okay, I got my eyes on him. Let me stand beside my man. And the uncle, oh, because she had asked him, like, are you coming to the wedding? And Enzo tells her, baby, remember I told you he not coming because he don't like the fact that he can't bring his guards and he can't have no guns there for the like two hours or however long weddings and receptions and shit go on and so she was like oh okay um but then he looking at uh the uncle what was his name giovanni gene giovanni was looking at her like basically playing her no attention because he's one of the ones who like thinks women are supposed to be seen not her so he sees her as of no importance not knowing she could kill the man with the like snap of her fingers so then we fast forward to the wedding the uncle is at the wedding still trying to have a conversation like trying to discuss business and Enzo blows him off he's like today is not that day um you know enjoy the festivities and if you act right then I'll see about talking to you but um the uncle asks for a dance with Lucia and while they're dancing you know he's digging his nails into her skin and so she places her hand like underneath his armpit and like somewhere on his shoulder where I'm I'm assuming that these are pressure points and she's digging in and she tells him Cause he was saying some stuff, you know, like they were having this tit for tat moment and he tells her, you know, when he starts digging his nails into her skin saying, you know, be careful. I don't like disrespectful women. And so when she puts her hands under his armpit and on his shoulder, she tells him, no, you watch how you talk to me. I could kill you with my bare hands if I wanted to. I'm like, wish she could, she's trained for this. And so when they step apart, he raises his hands as if he's about to slap her. And here come Enzo, you know, with a punch to the face in his gun at his temple. Like, I don't even know why you will play with me like this. And the uncle is like, basically, you can't touch me. He's like, I can do whatever the fuck I want to deal with the consequences later. So, um... Lucia standing back and she says, ask me. And he's like, what? No, everybody around him was looking at her like, what? And she looks at him and says, ask me. And he says, say the word. And she's like, you know, not today. We'll deal with it later. And that reminds me that I missed the point. So sorry, let's go back again before the wedding. Um, they were getting to know each other. And he took her out on a date. He uh, he flew her to D.C., and you know bought her a dress and some heels and took her out to dinner and you know but she wasn't stupid she was like why are we really here and he's like you know he just walked in the door so it was actually a senator and two other people that were meeting to do some shady business and one of the guys that was there lucia moretti they're like what do you want to call it maiden name or official name is really uh i believe it's costa or costas with the s at the end but that family don't claim them like they're half uh black and half italian so you know of course the italian side not claiming them don't see them as one of them so uh her dad is it leonard or leonardo he took on the Moretti name. He chose a completely different name. So he's like, you know, the guy tells her, you know, technically you're one of us. But she's like, you know, no the fuck I'm not. We don't claim y'all and I'm not claiming you now. But Enzo had the gun pointed at his head and told her, you know, all you have to do is say the word. And she said the same thing, like, not right now, maybe later. So he pulls his gun away and starts to whoop his uncle's ass though like with the gun and he ended up not shooting his uncle but he shot one of the uncle's guard because he showed up with two guards anyway even though he wasn't supposed to um 
and they left. But he was kind of upset because he was like, you know, if I tell you say the word, your ass supposed to say the word. Like, you make me reckless. So if I'm going to be reckless with you, let me go all the way. Man, of course, she's being logical. Like, nigga, really? Not right now. You cannot do this right now. So, no. And um, they, no, it was at the wedding. But the point is, she's like, can we stop pretending now? And so we go back to um, a couple months before where she was actually inside his hotel and the guards and stuff have been watching her like you know she keeps coming back here she's been here this many times she just sits here and does this so um he comes down and she's standing at the door waiting for him and she's like you know i was wondering how long it was gonna take you and so she tells him that she wants his help with something that she's doing and she's heard that he's a man of integrity so she knows that he'll help and he's like, you know, what's in it for me? And she's like, um, I can get you in the delegation, which, you know, is a seat at the table with her dad and all this other stuff. And that's something that he wants. But he tells her, okay, I'll help you if you do something for me. And she's like, I told you the delegate. He's like, I'm not really worried about that right now because he had planned on working his way in anyway. Um, he's like, I want you to marry me. And at first, she's like, man, you got me out your motherfucking mind. I'm not doing that. But then she agrees. And after the date, he actually told her, like, you know, you don't have to marry me. Um, you know, I'll just help you and that'll be what it is. But she's like, you know, no, I already committed to it. So come on, hubby. Let's go. And so now they're married and they can stop pretending as if they never met each other prior to the meeting that their father set up and so they're really digging each other they have sex you know it's great it's just like we're doing this and so she oh i forgot uh on the wedding day i don't know why i didn't put this in my notes but on the wedding day she had one of the guards deliver a message to uh to Enzo and it was a picture of a dead woman that says you know I know you've been looking for her I took care of this for you so it's just like that's my little baby but anyway the business not the business the project that Lucia and her cousins and the women were working on they were intercepting um what do you want to call them quote-unquote deliveries which were women inside of um trucks and stuff like that and they would give them medical attention and then find a safe place for them to be and help them find their way back to their families and so of course it's the mafia that's doing this so of course there's some pushback with that and that's coming from their their family with the maiden name the costas or the costas um I said Costas, Costas, Costases, whatever their name is. I'm sorry. Um, and come to find out, this plan originated with her... What do you want to call them? Her dad's, like, biological father. His son, Why am I going around the way with this? Her father's uh, half-brother you know also sought her out and it's like she he found out not too long ago about his brother and feels like what the father is doing is wrong because the father even though he puts no claim to him like he's also trying to sabotage his son at the same time it's like it ain't my fault you had an illegitimate uh half black baby that's your fault but um so in order to get to the father the the white brother <laughs> comes to her and is like, you know, I want you to shoot me to basically cause discourse within the business. And because, you know, people are going to be looking to see who dare would shoot, you know, him and what's going on. 
And so she agrees to do it. But when she told Enzo about it, Enzo was like, girl, you just is not trying to make my life easy. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, that also goes to um, the fact after they're married and everything is cool and they're finding their groove of being a couple while still doing their own separate businesses in which I love it because he had like a moment of clarity where it's like I I can now see how women feel uh for their partners because it's like if if she was just a stay-at-home wife or just a, a quote-unquote civilian now married to a mafia man when they leave you don't know if that's the last time you're gonna see them or not and you just have to basically hold your breath until you see them again. And he's like, I, I I, get that now because it's the same way for me. Like, I don't breathe right until I see her again because I never know if I'm going to see her again. But anyway, at the end, she tells him, so you know this means I have to kill my, my grandfather. And he's like, oh, my fucking God, girl. But she's great at her job. Nobody's going to know that it's her anyway, so... He's sitting in the car waiting for her anyway because it's like, if you're going to do this, I'm going to be there. But while she's on top of the roof, they have intercom. So she's like, you know, there's something that I want to tell you, but I've been too shy to say it face to face. And he's like, what? Not my woman. And the first time, well, the quote unquote first time they met, he called her shy. And she said calling me shy would be a, a insult. So he's like, no, not my woman. Ain't no way. But she's like, yeah. So she tells him that she's pregnant. He's like, are you telling me I'm going to be a father? And she says, I'm telling you that uh, we're going to have proof of our love of one another. Some romantic shit that she said that that was cute. And I thought it was cute. Um, and so it's like, whoop, whoop. All of this shit is worth it. Uh, <laughs> But no, it's a really great read. Um, so I'm pretty sure next week I'm going to dive into part two, which is her twin brother's story, which I think is, what is his name? Luca? It's it's definitely an L right off the top of my tongue. Um, but anyway, that is it, my beautiful people. Please go pick up Asia Monique's Sinful Vow. I believe the next... Yeah, part two is called Simple Redemption, which will be, yeah, Luca, Luca's story, and what is our 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 lady's name? Her name is Galena. Now, <laughs> I did get a little frustrated because I do notice this, like, with Italian and quote-unquote, there's a lot of G's because you have the, who is it? Enzo has a brother as well. I didn't mention it because it really wasn't important to this story, even though the brother is mentioned. Enzo has a brother named Mateo and a sister named Gianna. And then Luca's girlfriend slash upcoming wife name is going to be Galena. And then you also have, is it G? I want to say it's Gia uh lucia's cousin that i was mentioning earlier but i just call her g um but i believe it's g it's g a i a i just say g um so it's like it's a lot of g's and you can get confused really quickly about who you're talking about but that's a me thing not an asia thing uh so yeah once again go pick up the book great book great read peace and blessings my beautiful people